Click, listen, enjoy. Broadcasting live worldwide. Thank you for tuning in to Talkline Network Radio, America's longest running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner with us, Phil Rosen. I think it's been quite a while since we last had him on our program, senior partner at Whale. He is a member of the Board of Trustees of Yeshiva University in New York, vice chairman of the Board of Directors of Yeshiva College, also on the board of Birthright Israel. And we're here to pay tribute yeah. to Sheldon Adelson, who passed away. So, Phil, good to have you back. It's good to be back, Dev. I, I'm always enjoying your program, and uh, you and I have been friends for a very long time. And I know I appreciate what you do for our community, and I'm glad that uh, I mentioned why you and Birthright, two of my favorite causes. So Great. your involvement in Birthright is is due to Sheldon Adelson, who passed away, the philanthropist who gave and give, who kept giving a ton of money to Birthright Israel. I think last year he gave $70 million, if I remember correctly. So, so look, the two parts of your question, um, number one is obviously anyone who goes to Israel um, sees Birthright kids, sees Birthright buses, because there are 50,000 kids which means uh, 40 kids per bus. You can just do the math to figure out how many buses are traveling around the state of Israel and how many planes are arriving with birthright kids. So everybody sees them. I've always been interested. I always thought it was fascinating that there were so many uh, young people coming to Israel um, over the last 10 years, 18 years. Um, so uh, I followed it, um, and I followed... Uh, Sheldon, who I know from another board of directors that we sat together, um, I followed his involvement. He once invited me to a cocktail reception and uh, uh, about Birthright, and I went and I listened to the kids, the alumni, talk about their experience and talk about how each one of them felt that Birthright changed their lives completely and brought them close to Judaism, close to Israel, close to all the places that they've separated from over the past bunch of years of their lives. And I listened to Sheldon talk about his goal of changing the Jewish future and changing the Jewish present. And the way to do that is to get the kids to come back to Judaism. And to me, that was, um, that hit me in the heart. And that made me think, God, why isn't that something I'm involved in? So I got involved. I got on the board of directors. Um, I've obviously been involved in raising money and giving money to Birthright. But I go every year with Birthright groups to Israel to make sure that uh, I understand what they're going through. You know, we've got, I wouldn't say 100%, but we've got a track record that's probably about 98, 97% success, which is unheard of in Jewish organizations. No, they do amazing work, and it builds Jewish identity, and uh, it makes one, when you come back from Israel with birthright, you be, you're transformed, and that's good because right. it means you're more involved Jewishly, which you may not have been before going to Israel, and this is a big, big thing. We need that because so many people— That's a good word. That's a good word to use, transformation. It is. It is transformative, and uh, every one of the kids— we do polling, we do surveys, so we find out whether we're successful or not and how, how successful we are. And uh, you said it right. It changes their lives. And every one of them say that this trip was more than just a trip. It changed my life. They connect to Judaism. And whether it's, you know, uh, doing things like celebrating holidays or going to Shabbos dinners or studying or learning, or learning to dance, or learning to sing in a Jewish way, um, or, you know, considering who they're going to, who, who uh, will be their spouse, and whether they're going to bring their kids up Jewish. I thought those are all things that they think about um, after they return from birthright trip. That's certainly so important. How did you 
meet Sheldon Adelson? So we we sat we sat on a board together, um, and there were about fifty or sixty people on the board. And at some point, um, one of the board meetings, my seat was next to his seat. And uh, during a four or five hour long meeting, we ended up spending a lot of time whispering to each other. Um, and I developed a tremendous affection for him, and I feel that he did the same for me. And it was interesting because, you know, I'm one of the few people in that board who wears a yarmulke, and it was uh, it was interesting that Sheldon took such a liking to me. Um, and um, I think it shows what type of person Sheldon was. Sheldon really cared about um, how honest, how decent, and how um, dedicated the person he was talking to was. And for him, that meant everything in the world. So it wasn't just, uh, you know, whether you could talk a good game. For Sheldon, it was, is this person um, real? And that was, that was a determining factor in his, his and my relationship. You know, I only met uh, Sheldon Adelson once or twice, but I found him to be down to earth, approachable. You can talk to him, so that's my impression of him. I've seen him at different yeah, events. Yeah. I think it was the FIDF every year. I used to see him. Um, yep. He, tell, he used to tell the story. He used to tell the story about how he grew up so poor that he had to borrow his father's shoes if if he was going out of the house. That they shared a room, his parents and himself. And he told that all the time, partially because people should know that uh, he didn't inherit this money, he didn't inherit this status. This all came because of hard work and because of dedication. And and I think he would say today, also because of uh, God's help. Um, and I think that uh, that was that was really important for people to know that he was down to earth. And and he hardly ever turned away someone who wanted to talk to him. Um, the only time he would do so if it was he felt it wasn't real. Um, now I, I know I spoke to you off the air, Phil. That you said you never approached, you never asked him for anything. Um, but I, I was thinking out yeah, loud. You're on the board of uh, Yeshiva University. Certainly, lots of Jewish causes need more funding, more help. And, uh, and education, I think education is really the key. What we need to have philanthropists focus on, not just birthright, but investing in Jewish education in the United States. That's going to be our salvation. We have to have more kids, including non-Orthodox kids, especially non-Orthodox yep. kids, going to Jewish schools and camps. And, and, uh, and I think that in his, um, in his world in Las Vegas, Sheldon was the sponsor uh, of a tremendous amount of Jewish education, including the Chabad School and uh, a bunch of others. He he has he has given to uh, to Jewish education an enormous amount over the years. So, no, um, I think it's so important. That's really our future. Do you have any favorite Sheldon Adelson story you like to share with our audience? Um. So. Um, Sheldon and I went to dinner once and, um, just the two of us. And it was, uh, at a regular restaurant, not a kosher restaurant. Um, and, uh, you know, he said to me, I see that you're ordering a salad. Are you okay if I order something that's not salad? And I said, uh, Sheldon, listen. I'm not a rabbi. I'm certainly not your rabbi. And uh, it doesn't matter to me in the least bit. I said, in fact, I said, based upon all the great things that you've done for Israel, for birthright, for the Jewish people, I said, um, when you get up to heaven, and this is years ago, I said, when you get up to heaven, and it should be when you reach 120, I said, um, I think God is going to make the entire celebrity row, celebrity row of all the tzaddikim and the great righteous people stand up for you. And certainly, he, he, 
he helped and he brought back so many people to Judaism, to supporting Israel. He was there. He made a big, big difference. And that's he certainly did. going to be his legacy. And from when I, I met his wife, Dr. Miriam, she also, I believe, is carrying on a lot of what he's done. So hopefully we'll she's see that amazing. continue. Um, she's good. amazing. And she's, please God, she should continue and she should be healthy and well for many, many years to come. Amen. And we, we need more Sheldon Adels. Unfortunately, the newer generation is not as involved, but we need, I guess, if we invest in education, maybe the newer generations will be as involved. I'm, I'm exactly. If birth, birthright to bring them back, education to teach them, and then we'll have a slew of uh, Sheldon Adelsons in the future. Before I let Please you go, not. Phil Rosen, I know you're so active in Birthright, which is such an important organization. Is there a lot of follow-up when they come back from Israel? I know it's hard to do. A hundred percent. No, it's a hundred percent. We have, on every bus, there are ten counselors, um, some of them Israeli, some of them American, and their role when the bus comes back is to follow up. Each, they've each um, developed relationships with a number of the kids, and their goal is to follow up. As part of that, when they join the group, when they join Birthright and, and their trip, they they get an app for their phone. That app, following the trip, links them to all sorts of uh, follow-up activities, whether it's social, educational, religious, um, all sorts of activities, both in their area and, and locally, um, nationally, and throughout. And in addition to that, um, they form... Uh, WhatsApp groups from each bus, and the uh, WhatsApp groups are extremely active. I mean, I was I was on this morning on on uh, on social media, and I was seeing uh, billions of, of kids talking about uh, about Sheldon's passing and how how important it was for them to be able to go. I mean, if you think about it, seven hundred fifty thousand kids have gone on birthright. Wow, and Although Sheldon's not exclusively responsible, he's responsible for a great many of those kids going. No, it's certainly a great accomplishment. Very great accomplishment. I would assume in the age of COVID in the last eight, nine months, it's been much harder to have birthright trips to Israel to do yeah, in-person no, follow-up. No, right, no trips, but the follow-up has been extensive. So, so in so, my the previous trips. Phil Rosen, I want to thank you for all that you do, and thank you for sharing memories of Sheldon Adelson, of blessed memory, who did so much. He contributed so much to help change perceptions of Israel in Israel. Also, Jews in America have benefited generously from his uh, philanthropy. Uh, Phil Rosen, remember you that. Thank you. Phil Rosen is a senior partner of Well Gottschall of Manges. He's also on the board of trustees at University. And as you heard, Vice Chairman of the Board of Directors of Birthright Israel Foundation. He does amazing work. 750,000 kids have gone to Israel because of them. Phil, we look forward to having you back again. Thank you. I look forward to it. Stay well, please. And we're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Talk Line Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Talkline Radio and TV with Zeb Brenner is just phenomenal. Everybody concerned about the Jewish community should listen and watch. He has the best guests. He asks the most interesting questions. He's always so well prepared. It's talk radio and television from a Jewish point of view at its very best. To advertise on the Talkline Network and Talkline's email and social media blasts reaching over 70,000 people, please call 212-769-1925, extension 100. That's 212-769-1925, extension 100. Or email info at talklinenetwork.com. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now your host. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner. Can't believe it was a, can't believe it was a year ago that I last sat with Mort Klein at the CPAC convention in Washington, D.C., my how times fly and things change. Mort Klein is a national president of the Zionist Organization of America. Thank you for joining us. Great to be with you, uh, 
those events. The reason why we value tonight, I know you were close with Shelley Adelson, who was a great philanthropist, a great supporter of Israel. He loved the country with a passion. He supported birthright, getting Jews to Israel. So we mourn his passing, but you had a close relationship. I remember being at a dinner where he was the recipient of an honor from the ZOA. <laughs> yeah, we gave him our rarely given highest honor, the ZOA Third Theodore Herzl Gold Solid Gold Medal. We've only given it to prime ministers and people like Abba Eben, and we decided that Sheldon was, was worthy of being in that league of extraordinary Zionists, and uh, we gave that to him, and we gave his wife, Dr. Miri Adelson, the Louis Brandeis Award uh, at the same dinner. And uh, uh, so, no, I was, I've been close to him for, uh, for over 20 years. Wow, uh, he he is he is the proudest Jew, the most spiritually committed Jew I've ever met. Extraordinary man. <laughs> well, it certainly was, and I know that he's not been well for a while. And he and his wife, Dr. Miriam <laughs> Allison, have been tremendous supporters of Israel and <laughs> Jewish causes, and as well as politics. I mean, he was in support of the Republican Party, and I think he. <laughs> Uh, gave money to even Donald Trump, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Correct? Oh, yes. Uh, in this last go-around, uh, he gave tens of millions of dollars to Trump and to uh, Republican candidates. And by the way, something people don't uh, may not know, he established a brand-new medical school in Ariel, Israel. The Miriam and Sheldon Adelson School of Medicine is open. They have uh, several classes already, so he established a medical school. And something else people don't know, he gave away $250 million a year for medical research. He never talked about it, uh, but my friend from high school happened to be the director of his medical research foundation, and so he was a huge philanthropist funding uh, research into heart disease and cancer as well. Wow. So that that's all. Listen, he was philanthropy, <laughs> knew no bounds, and he was a tremendous <laughs> person who gave lots and lots of money. Uh, I would assume that his wife is going to continue his legacy. But tell us a little bit about some of your interpersonal re, 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 interpersonal relationship with Shelley Adelson. Well, we, we, met, we met when he used to support APAC. He stopped supporting APAC when they supported the Palestinian state. But we, we'd be at the same executive committee meetings. <laughs> and, and every resolution of mine, as you know, my resolutions were right-of-center resolutions, this guy would get up and fervently support my resolutions. I didn't know who he was. <laughs> and finally introduced himself to me, and that's how I met him, that we both had the same political philosophy and beliefs about Israel and America. <laughs> and uh, we became very close. In fact, one of my, the highlights of my experiences with Sheldon <laughs> was I was in Poland, that the invitation of the Polish government asked me to come there for various reasons. I was sitting having dinner with my wife, and my cell phone rings. It's Sheldon Adelson. <laughs> he tells me, Mort, I just left Trump Tower. I just had a meeting with President-elect Trump. This is when he had just won the election in November of 2016. He said, I've been urging him to move the embassy to Jerusalem. And Mort, he just promised me unequivocally that during this term as president, he promised me he will move the embassy. And Sheldon was ecstatic. That was like one of the highlights of his of his life, is that he was able to get a president to move the embassy. So he deserves enormous credit for that actually happening. <laughs> wow! And he was very close. He was very close with many of the major Israeli leaders. I remember my wife and I were have, was having dinner with him at his magnificent condo in Israel, and the, the doorbell rings, and Sheldon goes to answer the door, and who walks in but Benjamin Netanyahu. And Benjamin sees that I and my wife were sitting at the dining room table. He was in total shock and said, My God, Sheldon, you know Mort Klein, too? <laughs> so, so he was a, couldn't believe that I'm sitting there in, in Tel Aviv having dinner with Sheldon Adelson. So, <laughs> and uh, Sheldon, you know, of course, he's been my biggest stoner for many, many years. <laughs> because of Sheldon, we have a, 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 a campus program covering 100 campuses. <laughs> um, uh, he really funded that, and, uh, 
and also because of him, we're able to afford lobbyists in Washington. So Sheldon has been a, a critical factor in the growth of ZOA. He certainly put his money where his feelings were, and he made, he made a very, very big difference. Uh, I think he was listed as one of the 15th richest men in the United States, if I uh, read the reports correctly, uh, where he is. And certainly he was not afraid to spend and to give. What's with the new generation? Are we seeing the new generation of, of Jews or even non-Jews that are as generous in giving to causes they believe in as their parents? <laughs> no. It's not the same, and I believe one of the reasons it's not the same is is 80% of non-Orthodox Jews marry non-Jews. Four out of five of non-Orthodox Jews marry non-Jews. <laughs> so now you have uh, very successful uh, men and women, Jewish, uh, you know, Jewish men or Jewish women, business people or otherwise, and they have a spouse who's not uh, Jewish and who doesn't care that much about Jewish things or Israel. <laughs> So I think what we're we're we're, not, we're seeing a diminution in, uh, in in philanthropy from major wealthy Jewish people, and I believe intermarriage is a factor in that uh, in that issue. Uh, so it's uh, very very troubling. That's why it's so important uh, to support Jewish day schools, Jewish camps, trips to Israel. This is one of the ways we can ensure that Jews will remain Jews and remain committed to Jews and marry other Jews to keep our people. I mean, interfaith marriage is harming our support for Israel because intermarried couples have less commi commitment to Israel. It's also hurting Reform and Conservative Judaism because they have massive intermarriage and their children are not becoming members. That's why so many conservative synagogues are closing. And uh, it's also hurting Jewish organizations. We don't have as many Jewish people interested in Jewish organizations because their spouse is not Jewish and is not that interested. So the organization like the ZOA, what do you do when you have the old timers that gave money are passing are passing on and their kids are not as involved? Um, have you gotten have has there been a campaign, for example, to have to leave money in their wills to groups like ZOA? Have you people leave money in their wills, of course we do. And we have to uh, you find the smaller donors to, to, so we can maintain our programs. And we're working very hard. In fact, we've just hired a brand-new director of development at ZOA who will be coming on in April, uh, a, a major person, and we hope uh, th this will uh, help. But uh, uh, all the organizations are having difficulties, uh, uh, federations and the rest of them. So, uh, And I, I wish there was more of a campaign among Jews and Jewish leaders to urge and to promote that Jews should marry Jews. It's very important. And, you know, it's interesting, Zev. I wrote an article about this a month or so ago, a very soft article. <laughs> and uh, I will say publicly, the American Jewish Committee publicly attacked me for urging people, to, for urging Jews to marry Jews, saying this is deeply offensive and divisive. Can you imagine the American Jewish Committee opposing my saying we should urge Jews to marry Jews? This wow. is a problem. <laughs> And it's because so many of their board members and donors of all the organizations have to, either they themselves or have children who've been married, so they don't want to address it. They don't want to offend anyone. But this is a, a serious issue in, in, in America and American Jewish life, and we need more rabbis and Jewish leaders to make this a primary issue. Promoting but in order, in order for that to happen, let's be realistic, and you said it before, Mort, you can talk about it from the pulpit. If you don't have a strong Jewish background, a Jewish education, then you're more likely to marry out of the faith. So really the key is, is and it's long-term strategy, short-term not, is to invest and to make sure not just Orthodox kids, Reform conservative kids should go and get a Jewish education should be a priority, Absolutely. and I think that's the bigger challenge. The birthright Israel is great, but it starts when they're in college. It just not when they're in kindergarten. No Jewish day schools of all sorts, Jewish camps, and going to Israel. There's the three other ways we can increase the likelihood that Jews will marry Jews, and there've been studies showing that uh, that the kid, even kids who go to birthright, more of them will marry Jews. Uh, kids who go to Jewish day school and camps, uh, absolutely more of them will marry, or a higher percentage will marry Jews. It's a serious issue, and it's something that Sheldon cared about. One of the reasons he supported Birthright, he was a huge funder. Last year he gave Birthright $70 million, 7 wow. 
seventy million <laughs> because he saw that the studies they did showed that Jews who go to Israel for two weeks it has an impact and they're more likely to marry uh, Jews. Uh, other Jews, and that that was a very important to Sheldon. <laughs> now, does the Sheldon did he have any family, any any kids? Because I, 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 I haven't met them at, at the events. He yet. had five kids. He was married twice. His second wife, Mary Adelson, he was married to for over thirty years, and he has five kids. And I'll tell you, he dotes on his on his kids. Every time I was with him, either in his office in Las Vegas or at his home in Las Vegas or his home in L.A., whenever his if any of his children would come into the room, he would immediately uh, have them come over to him so he could hug them and kiss them. Every time. Every time he would kiss them. <laughs> he was wow. very devoted to his children. Are, are they as involved in, in Jewish causes and philanthropy as he is? Or he was? Uh, they, they, it's hard to say that anyone is as involved as Sheldon Nelson. <laughs> but uh, his kids care about Israel, and uh, uh, they care. Uh, so uh, he's he's raised them right, but uh, so we'll see what happens uh, in, in the future. His his youngest kids are uh, are, uh, are twenty and twenty two, so they're still relatively young. <laughs> Our guest is Mort Klein, the national president of the Zionist Organization of America. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please become a fan of Talk Line with Zeb Brenner on Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus, and YouTube. On Twitter at Talk Line Network. If you have an Android phone, please download our free app in the Google Store. For iPhones, download the Jewish Radio app. Of course, tune in 24 hours a day at TalkLineCommunications.com for nonstop Jewish broadcasting. Talk Line Network Radio, America's longest running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. Talk line radio and TV with Zeb Brenner is just phenomenal. Everybody concerned about the Jewish community should listen and watch. He has the best guests. He asks the most interesting questions. He's always so well prepared. It's talk radio and television from a Jewish point of view at its very best. To advertise on the Talkline network and Talkline's email and social media blasts reaching over 70,000 people, please call 212-769-1925, extension 100. That's 212-769-1925, extension 100. Or email info at talklinenetwork.com. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Welcome back to the program, Mom. Zev Brenner. Our guest is Morton Klein, the national president of the Zionist Organization of America. Mort, I know you were a big supporter of President <laughs> Trump. Are you disappointed at the rally that took place? where well, President Trump seemed to have lost a lot of his <laughs> following or some of his following and, again, facing all kinds of problems? Uh, first of all, I was not a supporter of President Trump. I praised and deeply appreciated his, his great policies affecting Israel. So we at ZOA take no positions, Republican or Democrat. We take positions of how policies affect Israel. And Donald Trump was the greatest friend to Israel we've ever had in the White House. <laughs> And of course, of course, what happened uh, this past week, I publicly uh, obviously uh, condemned uh, the violence and condemned the, the rioting going into the uh, Capitol. That was horrific. And I even put publicly that I wish Donald Trump had uh, sooner made a strong public and visible speech uh, urging people to, to back down and to stop. Uh, he did make a speech, but I thought it was too little too late. And uh, but uh, what's forgotten is when we had really monstrous riots, burning of buildings and cars and courthouses and police stations and really and, and people being killed and whole streets taken over in the last six months by Black Lives Matter organization and by Antifa. <laughs> you heard almost nothing from uh, certainly from uh, 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 Political leaders on the left, the Democrats, condemning this. Uh, and that was far worse than what happened. And uh, but, but what happened this week was a, an atrocity and uh, never should have happened. Uh, now, so, so we're going to see a change. I mean, the Trump's legacy, I think, has been hurt by what happened <laughs> with, the, with the demonstration. And obviously... Um, <laughs> 
like you said, <laughs> and there's also a chilling of First Amendment by groups such as Twitter and Facebook and Google where they're clamping down. And on, Amazon. And Amazon, right. All the big corporations <laughs> are doing that. And that's chilling. There's a First Amendment rights in these countries, unfortunately, is not being respected. Um, and, I'm, and I'm personally uncomfortable that these big companies are going to decide what they can censor and what they cannot. Uh, it's a big problem. I'm not sure how things are going to change before they get better, but it's certainly frightening. Um, and well, I can tell you, my own Twitter account. Every day, I'm losing 50 followers, and and 50 people that I follow. In other words, Twitter is now looking at people who are right of center and taking away their followers on their own. That's, I, for over a month now, I'm losing followers. And by the way, my friends who are who are conservatives tell me they're losing large numbers of followers. This is a concerted effort to reduce the influence of right-of-center people. It's an, an outrage. In fact, as some of my Russian Jewish donors have said to me they're shocked about what's happening in America. This reminds them of Russia, they told me, that they came to America for freedom, and now they're seeing actions being taken that, they, that uh, happened in Russia, and they thought here in America it would never happen. It's very frightening, uh, this squashing of freedom of speech, and, uh, and cancel culture. <laughs> the JCRC of Boston is because of a demand by J Street and New Israel Fund. It's working. They want to throw Z away, my organization, out of the JCRC in Boston. Why? Because we condemn the Black Lives Matter platform, which is viciously anti-Semitic and anti-Israel. And, and they're actually working to try and get us thrown out. So we're becoming part of the cancel culture. And we have to fight against this. And we need more Jewish leaders and rabbis to speak out, and politicians to speak out against this. It's a frightening development here in America. This is not the America that you and I knew uh, a number of years ago. Certainly. And unfortunately, they are private corporations. They are pr private companies, so they can get away with that. And when I spoke to Alan Dershowitz, he said, <laughs> well, they have to have competition. Easier said than done for them to have real Serious competition. <laughs> Easier said than done. No, no, the problem is they can't be sued. There's a law called the 230. On the, on the, on the rules, <laughs> right. They, they work, but but that's something which might, might unite Republicans and Democrats for different reasons where they would like to take away that 230 protection from the big corporations. Hopefully they will. You see, these, see, Facebook and Twitter and such claim that they're simply a platform. So why should they be allowed to be sued for what people say? Because they're just a platform, but they're not a platform. They're now editing people, what they're saying. They're now canceling people, what they're saying, not allowing people to say certain things. So now they've become editors. They're no longer just a platform. So uh, they really have to do something about Rule 230, and people should be allowed to sue them if they continue to edit and cancel and censor uh, people's thoughts, whether they're horrible thoughts or, or, or wonderful thoughts. America has freedom of speech, and we're losing it. Unfortunately, Mort Klein is our guest, the National President of the Zionist Organization of America. Mort, the Trump administration, I think people have to admit, even if they didn't like Donald Trump, that he's one of the most pro-Israel presidents in American history. The policies have certainly been very good for Israel. With the coming of a new administration, what can we expect in your opinion? Look, I've known Joe Biden for over 20 years. He spoke at one of my dinners uh, 15 years ago. <laughs> Did you give him the Herzl Award? No, he was simply, he, I don't think we gave him an award. He was simply a keynote speaker. <laughs> Maybe we did give him an award. Maybe we gave him, I don't remember, frankly. I, don't, I just don't remember. But he was the keynote speaker, a crowd of over 1,000. <laughs> I will tell you, uh, when I lobbied him over the years, his staffers, were the, among the most hostile to Israel I ever lobbied. The staffers he chose were not good on Israel. <laughs> he himself condemned Israel building in Judea and Samaria, promoting a Palestinian state. <laughs> and every person that he has nominated as a candidate for important posts, from State Department to national intelligence, <laughs> even to the domestic policy, is someone who has a background of hostility to Israel. He has put together a group of people who have uh, uh, left-wing hostility to Israel. I'm very, very nervous about who he's putting up. <laughs> and uh, he just appointed yesterday Kirsten uh, Clark as, a, as the head of the, the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department. She's an overt anti-Semite. She's brought, when she was in college, she brought in Tony Martin, a, a vicious uh, anti-Semite from Wellesley College. 
And uh, when he made these horrible remarks against Jews, she said, he's speaking truth. It's all based on facts. <laughs> so this is just the most recent appointment. But uh, uh, all the appointments are, real, are really a problem. Uh, and, and remember, he allowed Linda Sarsour to speak at the Democratic National Convention. She's one of the biggest, most public Jew haters and Israel haters in America, and they allowed her to speak. So I'm, I'm very worried about this administration. They're going to they're going to uh, become uh, embrace Iran again, and they're going to pressure Israel to give away more land unilaterally, pressure them not to build anywhere in Judea and Samaria, <laughs> and uh, and push for for a state which we all know will be a terrorist state. And, I was, no and, and it's going to be harder for you and other groups to speak out because of the culture <laughs> that we're in. It'd be much yeah. more difficult to get your voice heard. <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been speaking out about every one of his nominations, how bad they are for Israel. And I've gotten calls from two major Jewish leaders pleading with me to stop criticizing Biden's appointments. It'll only make them angry at us and we'll have less of a voice with him. Uh, so Jewish leaders have uh, become afraid. And we need them to speak out. These are very bad appointments he's made uh, on, on, on the posts that affect Israel. Uh, now, one, one, one good right. appointment, though, is Ann Newberg, who is a religious woman who is going to be coordinating cyber security for uh, the president. <laughs> well, I don't know her views on Israel. Remember, many of these people that are a problem are Jewish. They're Jewish. So she's an Orthodox Jew. Uh, I hope she'll be okay. I don't know her. And by the way, if people want to learn more about these uh, uh, people that he's nominated, why they're, they're a problem, they can go to our website, zoa.org, zoa.org, and we have a whole listing of uh, the problems with uh, these nominations. Mark Klein, National President of the Zionist Organization of America, thank you for being with us. We look forward to having you back again. <laughs> thank you, Zev. Let's uh, pray to Hashem that you should intervene to help America and help Israel and uh uh, things are difficult now. Let's hope and pray that they'll get better. Absolutely. We need a shot in the arm. Yep. And we're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Thanks for listening. Talk Line Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community.